Genesis chapter number 19, we'll begin reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray ye, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him, and, he, and entered into his house, and he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot, and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. And Lot went out at the door unto them, and shut the door after him, and said, I pray ye, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known a man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. And they said, Stand back. And they said again, This one fellow came in to sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now we will deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut to the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides, son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place, for we will destroy this place, because of the cry of them is waxen great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. Let's pray. Our Father, we sure do bless you. We thank you for this dear missionary family that has a burden to go win people to Jesus. Father, we pray that your great hand of grace would be upon them. We pray that you would give them souls for their labor. We pray that you'd give them their heart's desire to be able to plant churches in the Midwestern part of Brazil. And God, I pray many would come to Christ. Uh, and I pray the next time we get the statistics of those lands, of the peoples that live there, uh, Lord, there be uh, not only uh, uh, the statistic of Bible-believing churches, but many Bible-believing churches, uh, and many that are now religious will be saved uh, and trusting in Christ. And God, I pray that many would come to you before it's everlasting too late. Now, I pray, Father, that, Lord, you'd bless the reading of the Word of God. Uh, help us this night. Center our hearts and our minds upon you. Uh, and God, I pray that, Lord... Uh, in your wrath, you'd remember mercy, but I also pray uh, that your children would get a burden uh, uh, for the day and for the hour, and may we truly be revived in these days. Uh, may we see a great movement of God in our country. Uh, Lord, our country uh, was birthed uh, uh, based upon the oracles of the Word of God, but you would never know it looking across our lands tonight. Uh, God, we're thankful for churches like ours that are still preaching uh, the Word of God. But, God, Father, I pray that, Lord, somehow, some way, you to get outside our churches uh, would impact our land and we'd see many come to Christ. Uh, now, Father, help us this night. Be with those that are sick. Uh, be with those that are providentially hindered. Uh, help, uh, Lord, those that are traveling. Uh, but, Father, for the next few minutes... Uh, I pray that uh, you'd bind the powers of hell, uh, and I pray that, Father, you would uh, speak to our hearts. Uh, 
do something supernatural in our midst, uh, do something unusual in our midst, uh, glorify your namesake, we'll thank you for it, uh, use this unworthy vessel, and we'll bless you for that as well, for it's in the wonderful and glorious name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things, uh, amen, and amen. Uh, this chapter reveals uh, uh, several, several things. The first thing that this chapter reveals uh, is the rescue of Lot. Uh, aren't you glad uh, that God uh, knows who are his uh, and he's concerned about those that belong to him uh, even if they're not living for him uh, even if they're not where they should be uh, even if uh, 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 they've strayed uh, aren't you glad God's still c concerned about his youngins uh, could I say we could learn from that I know of folks uh, 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 if somebody uh, in their family isn't living right or doing right, they'll write them off. I know of churches that if somebody gets out of the will of God, they'll write them off. Uh, but aren't you glad for the long-suffering of God? Uh, by the way, this is not the first time that Lot has to be rescued. He was rescued earlier by his uncle Abraham. Uh, Abraham uh, uh, went down and had a battle and rescued Lot uh, and uh, all the spoils of the war. Uh, when he came back, he met a fellow by the name of Melchizedek. Uh, had no beginning or ending of days. Uh, a man who was a priest uh, and a king. Uh, and uh, uh, Abraham was so impressed with him, he paid a tithe uh, of all the spoil to this man. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, you can believe uh, what you want to. I believe that uh, Melchizedek, uh, he met the Lord back in the Old Testament. That's what I believe. Uh, uh, there, uh, the Lord's, uh, he had no beginning or no ending of days. He's Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. Uh, he's a king and a priest, uh, and there's nobody like him. Uh, and when you come in contact with him, him, uh, uh, he'll get your heart uh, and your pocketbook. But anyway, that's another message. But Lot had to be rescued before. Wouldn't you think he'd learn his lesson? But how many times has the Lord had to come back to us and help us and rescue us and speak to us? Huh? Mm, so, uh, by the way, uh, the Bible does say that Lot was a righteous man but he vexed his soul. And if you're not careful, you can be righteous. You can belong to the Lord, but that don't mean you're right with the Lord. So this chapter reveals the rescue of Lot. But it also reveals that Lot had some roots that had been established. Look again in verse number 1. The Bible says there came two angels to Sodom. And even this, this chapter is loaded. There's a lot of things I'd like to deal with. I'd like to deal with these angels. I'd like to deal with men from young and old. The whole city comes out uh, because they heard two men. Uh, 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 have showed up uh, uh, new fellas fresh faces have showed up uh, they want to defile these men uh, uh, I'd like to deal with uh, how in the world if you're struck with blindness you still want to pursue them uh, I'd like to deal with a father uh, uh, that is uh, uh, doesn't care about his daughters that is willing to throw two daughters that have never known a man to these men uh, uh, to have their way there's a lot I'd like to deal with but I'm not going to tonight don't have time but notice in verse number 1, it says, They came to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. Later in the chapter, uh, uh, it tells us in verse number 9 uh, 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 that uh, he is a judge in that city. And uh, they said even though he's a judge, he shouldn't judge over us because he's a stranger. He's never been here all his life. But Lot had so... Uh, 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 gained respect in that city. They, they put him at the gate. The gate was one of the most uh, prestigious places you could be in a city. If you are a judge at the gate, you're somebody. And by the way, he was a wealthy man. That probably had a lot to do with it. They probably said, man, this guy's got wealth. This guy's got uh, uh, something about him. And they made it. But he had established roots in the city. Can I say why we don't have revival? It might be that we've got too many roots established in the world mm, that the Lord can't move in our hearts. Mm -mm. 
how long do you think Lot was down there? I know when he looked at it and he saw the, the, the well-watered plains of Jordan and, he, and, and him and Abraham decided they had to separate because their, their herdsmen couldn't get along. Uh, and uh, Abraham said, you go which way you want to and I'll go the other way. Uh, and Lot looked and he saw those cities. He thought, boy, that'd be a good place to raise a family. I wonder how long he, he was down there before he realized this isn't a good place to raise a family. But he stayed anyway. I wonder how many times God spoke to our hearts about things. But we stay anyway. Hmm? This chapter reveals the rescue of Lot. The roots had been established. But can I say that it also reveals the retribution for sin. The Bible says, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. The Bible still says, the wages of sin is death. Thank the Lord, it goes on to say, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. But can I say that if sin is not dealt with in the life of a believer, sin will be dealt with. It would be much better for us to deal with God where we are and where we should be than to let God deal with us about it. Mm -mm. It would be a whole lot better to get right with the Lord than to let the Lord chastise us. But can I say, the vexation of Sodom and Gomorrah towards God got to the point God couldn't stand the very existence of them and he destroyed them. And friend, you look around this world and there are things that we can get disgusted about. There are sins we can get disgusted about. There is a double standard that we can get disgusted about. There are things that are propagated about racism and all kinds of things that we can get disgusted about. Uh, aren't you glad the only color God sees is red? He's interested in the red, royal, redeeming blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad God's no respecter of persons? Uh, you know what I found about people when they get saved? They're no respecter of persons either. They just love God's people. Uh, they love sinners, and they want to see sinners saved. Uh, but can I say, uh, there comes a point uh, when God says enough is enough, uh, and God's looking at this old wicked world. Uh, he's seeing what's going on, uh, how it's all lining up. Uh, he's seeing the hand of Satan throughout this world, uh, and Satan knows uh, his end is coming. Uh, he's working overtime. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, say uh, uh, God looks uh, at all all that's going on and he's about fed up Amen. we see in this chapter what happens when God says enough is enough when God runs out of grace and can I say his vast supply will never end but there comes a time when he's, he's had enough brother Ron was there ever a time when your children just got to that last point and grace was not in your thought pattern. Pattern, Brother Ray, that little switch you used to keep us, set aside just for a special time, there was a time when grace was gone. Hmm? Huh? Huh? Colonel, did your father get to a point sometimes when he forgot about grace? Hmm? Yeah. Huh? Now let me talk to this next generation. Have you ever had a whooping? No, I didn't say a spanking. Where you've been brought up off the floor, whooping? I don't believe it. Let me see. What are you whooping him with? That's a, that's a whooping thing. Huh? Huh? I know you've had a whooping, but not as many as you deserve. Huh? Huh? Y'all don't know what a whooping is. You know what a spanking is. You know what time out is. I'm talking about a whooping. I'm talking about where you didn't think you was going to live to see another day. Where you was crying for mama because mama had mercy. But daddy ran out of grace. I know you don't know anything about a whipping. Uh, you really don't know anything about a whipping. Uh, 
Brother Ray, we know what a whooping was. Look at these kids. You think these kids know anything about a whooping? Well, I got I'm short. Yeah, I know. Uh, he said, what are you trying to say, preacher? I'm saying there came a point when God said, no, I've showed all the grace I'm going to show. I've given the last warning I'm going to give. And God destroyed those two wicked cities. Now, you think that would have been enough to thunder even down to our generation that we better pay attention to what God says. Can I say throughout the Bible, God blesses obedience, but God curses disobedience. And yet, so many people in our day and age could care less what God says. I got to thinking about this chapter. and I got to thinking about all the events happening this night. And this is what I want to preach on. I want to preach on the last night in Sodom. The last night in Sodom. Can I say that the last night in Sodom, on this last night, we find that wickedness was prevalent. In verses 4 through 7, we find that these men come out to try and have their way with the two men that show up to Lot's house. Now these were not two ordinary men. The Bible said they were angels. These were ministers from heaven sent for one purpose. These men uh, were cherubim most likely. And cherubim or archangels. Either one of them nobody wants to mess with. Either one of them can destroy uh, cities, can destroy countrysides in a night without breaking a sweat. Uh, God sends these two men there. Lot uh, sees them, goes out and bows down before them, invites them to his house. He said, we'll, we'll dwell on the streets. Uh, 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 and Lot's worried about their safety. Uh, Lot should have been more worried about his own safety uh, than he was their safety. Uh, 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 but we find that uh, uh, the men of the city want to come out and there's wickedness uh, even propagated by Lot. Uh, uh, during this whole time, uh, wickedness was prevalent. Uh, can I say... Uh, why we're sitting here in church uh, on this Wednesday night. Uh, why we came out to worship God and sing songs of praise unto God. Uh, uh, why we're here to hear uh, uh, a word from the Lord. Uh, uh, there is wickedness prevalent in our cities, uh, in our streets. Uh, I'm not talking about Washington. Uh, I'm not talking about Chicago. Uh, I'm not talking about L.A. or New York. Uh, I'm talking about in Florence, uh, in Dry Ridge. Uh, I'm talking about in Walton, in Union, uh, and wherever man's breathing tonight. Uh, there is wickedness going on uh, in homes, uh, in the streets, uh, in clubs, uh, in bars. Uh, there's wickedness going on. Uh, can I say everything the Bible names is sin uh, is going on in our cities. Uh, there is no fear of God in men's eyes anymore. Uh, uh, men have the mindset uh, do what pleases me. Uh, uh, the very essence to sin uh, is my right to my claim to myself. Uh, and people are doing what they think they can do uh, and they think they're getting away with it. Uh, but the Lord says, vengeance is mine. Uh, I will repay, saith the Lord. Uh, there's coming a judgment day, neighbor, uh, and nobody's getting away with anything. Uh, God's a keeping a record. Uh, and just like the last night, of Sodom. Uh, wickedness was prevalent. Uh, wickedness is prevalent here. Uh, wickedness will be prevalent uh, before the rapture of the church. Uh, and this could be our last night uh, in our city. And I say wickedness was prevalent. Mm. It amazes me how the Lord pinned down centuries ago that in the last days perilous times would come. That men would be lovers of their own selves. Men would be lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. That men would call that which is evil good and that which is good evil. Amen. We live in a day and age uh, where it doesn't matter what the law says. It doesn't matter what the Bible says. It doesn't matter what morality says. Uh, uh, people uh, will change the laws to benefit their sin. 
Listen, I know I'm old, and I know I'm old-fashioned, and I do not apologize for it. But I'm here to tell you, what these kids face back in our day, we wouldn't have faced it. Somebody shows up and tells me that they're a dog or a cat, they're a furry. Well, after we laughed at them, we'd have done something about that. I promise you this, they wouldn't have kept showing up. But today, oh, everybody's allowed to be what they're supposed to be because everybody's mental state is so fractioned and, and nobody can handle being told no. So we'll just let everybody be what, they're, what they want to be. You know, you're a man, but you want to act like you're a woman and say you're a woman and you want to compete in women's sports. Well, go ahead. That wouldn't happen in our day. And by the way, let me just say something. I don't hear of women saying they're men wanting to compete in men's sports. I don't hear of women saying that they are identifying as a man and using a, w a man's bathroom. Why is it only men going in women's bathroom? Because they're a bunch of perverts, that's why. They're wanting to take advantage of little girls. It's wicked. We live in that day and age. I'm telling you, the last night in Sodom, wickedness was prevalent. And I say on the last night in Sodom, a warning was sent. Look at me in verse number 13. For we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. It doesn't sound like these two men were worried about the men of Sodom. Uh, these two angels came and they gave a warning to Lot. We're here to destroy this place. Hmm? Can I say the Lord's coming? And He's coming in the wrath and vengeance of Almighty God. Hmm? When the Lord literally shows back up in this old wicked world, they're going to cry for the rocks to fall on them because they don't want to look at Him or face Him. Too late. Time's up. Here He comes. Hmm? And when He comes... He's going to send a sharp two-edged sword out of his mouth and he's going to destroy those that have fought against Israel and those that are wicked. There's coming a day. Hmm? In the valley of Megiddo alone, they said the blood will go all the way up to the horse's mouth. The Lord's coming. But a warning's being sent. Every time a true man of God gets behind the pulpit and exhorts people to Get right with the Lord. Exhorts people to uh, uh, come to Jesus. Exhorts people uh, uh, to seek the Lord while he may be found. Exhorts people uh, uh, to repent because the Lord's coming. The warning's being sent. But Brother Adrian, the problem is in our churches, in our land, we've heard for so long that Jesus is coming. That people either believe he's not coming or they believe he is, he's just not coming tomorrow. Well, he might not come tomorrow. He might come tonight. Let me ask you right now. Are you ready to meet him? Young ladies, you ready to meet the Lord with everything you've got in your life right now? Young men, you ready to meet the Lord? Parents, you ready to meet the Lord? Grandparents, you ready to meet the Lord? could come tonight this might be your last warning this may be the last revival meeting we ever get to attend huh you ready for revival let me help you with that I'm the pastor of the church we're not ready for revival when's the last time you prayed and fasted and asked God to send revival I'm telling you they got a final warning this may be our final warning. The Lord's coming. There are things happening in our country. Listen, it's not always been roses in America. America's got a bloody history. 
You know, at one time, it was illegal to be a Baptist in America. You know, ladies in America, at one time, you couldn't vote. You know, if you're a person of color, one time in America, you had no rights. And that was even in my lifetime. I remember seeing water fountains for whites only in my lifetime. Can I say there's always been a bloody history in America? But not like the one that's coming. If we're honest, we can all have a sad story to tell. Let me get back on the young people tonight. Many of your mamas and daddies, but certainly your grandparents and your great-grandparents, they didn't have what you all got today. They didn't have air conditioning. They didn't have, most of the time, kids, their own bedroom. They didn't have televisions. Certainly not one in their bedroom. Huh? You know when we got our first color TV? It was when the man was, man was landing on the moon. My dad wanted to see it in color. And it was broadcast in black and white. Huh? Huh? Hey, I remember if you wanted to change the t- channel, you had to get out of the seat and go use it, go over and turn the knob. And you only had to turn it three times because you only had three or four channels. Huh? And by the way, it wasn't on all night. You didn't stay up all night watching TV. It was after Johnny Carson. There was another goofy show on, and then they, they played the national anthem. You saw all the glory, and everything went to pssst. Huh? Most time, we didn't stay up that late because we had to go up early and do some work. Yeah. Hmm? Uh, any of y'all mow grass? Thank you, Caleb. Thank you. <laughs> the smallest one in the bunch mows grass. <laughs> what do you do? You all got more grass. I know you, you eat like a goat, but hey, you know, get some goat. What? Hey, you need to learn to mow some grass. Have you learned to ride a bike yet? Oh, cool. Son, you should have lied in church, you know? Uh We used to mow grass, and the mowers weren't made like they are today. They was made out of cast iron. Uh, And when you mowed with that thing, it worked on you. And when we did the weed eating, it was a long sling blade, and you just, you did it by hand. That was mowing grass. Uh, And when, what are you two looking at? You don't, let me see your hands. Ain't a callous one, you sissy. Huh? I leave you alone, you're the piano player. I don't want to make you mad. Huh? Hey, Grandpa. Teach them boys how to mow. It'll save your back. I don't care. Let them mow. Save your back. You already lost your hair. Huh? Put them boys to work. And get that boy a bike. You can get him at the fleet. Oh, well, you get. He's got a. He, he, you get your driveway's long enough for him to learn to ride a bike. Uh, get him a bike. Don't get him a helmet. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Annette and I was coming home the other night, and here, there's this little fella. He's a going at it, riding this little bike or something. His daddy's behind him. Daddy's helmet. I said, I don't care. Y'all never wear a helmet. Ella Rose wants to ride a bike. We'll ride. I ain't getting no helmet. Did you have a helmet? That's why you're kind of loopy today. But anyway, I'm trying to help y'all. Your grandparents and your great grandparents, they suffered to have what you have. Now they didn't know they were suffering. They just didn't have anything. They worked hard all their lives. How many of you beat fam? That shocks me right there. 
Huh? How many eating potted meat? They don't know about that one. It comes in a can, yeah. Hey, a little spam with mayonnaise won't hurt you. I'm telling you. Huh? If you don't eat mayonnaise, it'll hurt you. Huh? How many of you have, have had to take some castor oil? That will keep you having a perfect attendance record at school. Because you don't play sick knowing you're going to have to take a couple teaspoons of castor oil. You'll go to school if you're dying to not have to take castor oil. Huh? Listen. Your, your grandparents and great-grandparents, they couldn't afford to go to the doctor a lot of times. I mean, they had to really be hurt to go to the doctor. So they did stuff like castor oil. Or if you got a wounded knee, they'd spray that Bactine in your knee, man. That, oh, hey, you'd scrape your knee and blood running down. You didn't tell mom or grandma. You didn't want that stuff sprayed in. I mean, that'd send you to heaven. Uh, I'm just trying to tell you, this generation is reaping the hardships of generations that came before us. We are reaping blessings because of what they endured. But this generation's gotten soft because they haven't worked for it. Hmm? Uh, well, that's nowhere my notes didn't cost anything. But I'm telling you, there's a warning being sent. People have gotten so soft and gotten so used to no move of God, they don't expect one even in our churches. Can I say, on the last night of Sodom, pleas were withstood. Look at verse number 14. These angels give Lot the warning. They're, they've come to destroy the city. In verse 14, the Bible says, And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his son-in-laws. You say, what happened? He had not raised his family around the Bible, around God, around worship, around uh, uh, the heritage of his people. Uh, he did not raise his people to know the Lord. Uh, and when uh, the time came, uh, when the warning came forth, uh, his son-in-laws thought he was mocking them, uh, probably thought he was drunk. Uh, I said, what are you talking about? Uh, we've never heard anything about this. Uh, and they went off to sleep. Uh, they didn't believe him. Uh, they withstood his plea. Uh, they ignored what he tried to tell them. Uh, hey, friend, if you don't get full of God, uh, if they don't see God in you, uh, if they don't hear God come out of you, uh, hey, uh, when the Lord gets ready to come back, uh, which could be tomorrow, uh, if you uh, go to tell somebody, they're not going to believe you because they haven't seen God in your life. Uh, the pleas were withstood. I got to thinking why they didn't believe Lot. Obviously, they were ignorant. Now, I'm not saying they weren't, they had a mental deficiency. They were ignorant to the things of God. They didn't know anything about God. Obviously, if they'd heard the Lord was going to destroy the city, and they knew about the Lord, and they knew about uh, uh, how He had destroyed Egypt and all the other things that God was going to do and how He could do, they would have listened and heeded to it. But can I say, they were ignorant. By the way, Egypt hadn't happened yet, but they still would have heard what God and His power could do. But they were ignorant of the things of God. And I say, in America, we've got good people. They're just ignorant to the things of God because we haven't told them. We haven't really been what the church should have been all these years. Can I say, if the church would have been what the church should have been all along, there'd have never been a welfare system in America. There'd have never been the race problem in America. There'd have never been uh, the sin problem we're facing right now in America. We wouldn't not uh, uh, have to worry about prayer out of schools. We wouldn't have to worry about not being able to take a Bible and say anything. By the way, if you haven't heard about that young man over at Campbell County, I salute a young man that stood up and told uh, his classmates, uh, 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 regardless of what the uh, uh, faculty uh, thought about it afterwards, uh, went up and stood and told his classmates, no matter what they become in life, they better get saved, better get 
get born again, better trust in the Lord. Uh, he got in all kinds of trouble and they withheld his, his diploma. But hey, hats off to a young man that'll make us stand uh, and tell him the truth. Uh, uh, but listen, uh, we need more of that. We wouldn't have uh, 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 all the uh, uh, going in the wrong bathrooms and not knowing what a man is, what a woman is. Uh, 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 if we would have been what we should have been all those years, uh, if we'd have truly been Bible Christians, uh, uh, this world would be a different place. Uh, can I say some of the worst things I've ever seen have been around church people. People who claim to know God, some of the most vicious people I've ever seen. And Dr. Phil and I was talking today, and I told him uh, some people moved into my granddaddy's church, and uh, they wanted to start a softball team, wanted to be a part of a softball league. Well, they kept pressing my grandpa, kept pressing him, kept pressing him. And finally he consented to it. Well, they were new to the church. They really didn't know too much about you know, my ball playing skills. You know, at that time I was still on course and the Reds were looking at me. And uh, one Sunday afternoon they was over hitting some balls and stuff and I just showed up and was going to shag some flies. And I, they said, oh, you got to play for us. You got to come play. 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 So I went and showed up play. Colonel, as God is my witness, and I went on to play some pretty high-end softball some pretty big stuff. I played, you know, with ex-major leaguers. The worst crowd I've ever seen on a ball field were church people. I never heard such cussing. I never seen such fights. I never seen such bench clearing brawls. I never seen it as bad as I've ever seen it. I played ball all my life. The worst I've ever seen was church people. I said, what'd you do? I quit playing church ball. Huh? Because they were crazy. But they'd have prayer before the game. Uh, crazy. I'm just trying to tell you. They were ignorant. Not only that, they were intolerant. They didn't say, hey, this is something new I've never heard about. We're going to sit down here. Tell us about the Lord. No, they were intolerant. No, we don't want to listen to what you have to say. We want to go to bed. Isn't it amazing this wicked world says that we as Bible believers must be tolerant of them. But they're not tolerant of us. They don't want to hear what the Bible says. They don't care what we stand on. They don't care about the centuries uh, uh, that we have stood true to the uh, bloodstained banner of Calvary. They don't care about what we stand on. No, you've got to accept us. Why? You don't accept us. Hmm? By the way, next month's Pride Month. Can I say that's one of the things God hates is pride. You figure that out. Uh, and by the way, take the word Pride Month, put it together. Look at the middle word it spells. The last two letters of pride, D-E, the first three letters of month, M-O-N, demon. Ooh, you're welcome. That didn't cost you anything. Huh? Please with, were withstood because they were ignorant, because they were intolerant, because they were insulted. How dare you tell me about God? That offends me to tell you about God. I'd rather offend people and tell them about God than not tell them and they die and go to hell and at the great white throne judgment they look at me sitting over in the jury and say, why didn't you tell me? They were insulted. Can I say they were not interested? And there's a lot of people that will not be interested in hearing about Jesus Christ but one day they'll wish they would have. And then let me say this, and most importantly, they were not influenced. Lot had no godly influence on their life. What influence are we having on those around us? And what influence is our church having? I know most of you show up Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, you have no idea, but you don't have to go very far that you'll find out somebody's life is being impacted out there because of Emmanuel Baptist Church. The sun never sets on our ministry. And our little church, wait till we get to heaven, and you see all that was accomplished from our little church. I bless the Lord. huh, Brother Bruno, you ask him. He showed up, what, five minutes, he said, now I know what Brother Uriah was saying about this church. There's something about this place. Isn't that what you told me? 
Yeah. Brother Uriah's been here one time. Hmm. But can I say, it's not time to rest on our laurels. We need to influence people for Christ. Paul said, knowing the terror of the Lord, I persuade men. Hmm. Then let me say this, on the last night of Sodom, folks were worry-free. They were living how they lived. They went to bed like they went to bed. I mean, just went to sleep like they went to sleep like as any other night. They was worry-free. They had no fear of what may befall them tomorrow. And can I say, we live in a day and age where people just worry-free. You know why we need revival? Because we need Holy Ghost conviction again. We need people to be disturbed when they go to sleep at night that if they don't wake up, they're going to die and go to hell. Yeah. You know the only thing that can keep people sleep from them? Holy Ghost conviction. I didn't care about going to sleep until I got under conviction. Then I was a little worried about going to sleep. Afraid I wouldn't wake up. And let me say this lastly. On the last night in Sodom, the witness was removed. Look at verse 15. When the morning arose, and the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, and the Lord being merciful unto him, and they brought him forth and set him without the city. Can I say, even Lot, knowing the Lord was going to bring judgment, he still dilly-dallied long. Say, what do you mean? mean? Lot would have been late for church. Hmm? He'd been showing up after, after church time because he just lingered. You'd have thought, when it's time to get up, it's time to get out of here, let's go. Nope. And God being merciful, the angels grabbed hold of him and his wife and his daughters and drug them out of the city. Brother, Brother Ron, I fear this, but some, when the rapture happens, people are going to go, but they're going to wish they'd had another day. Too attached to things in the world. If it were possible, Brother Adrian, they'd say, Lord, now i got something to do. Can you come back a little later? He said, rise, get up. And by the way, when the trumpet blows, it's time to get out of here. Right. But the witness was removed. And once Lot was out of there, judgment fell. Now, in lieu of all that, and in lieu of the fact that Jesus is coming, we don't know when he's coming. All I can tell you, is if you grew up, grew up in the country, you could be sitting outside and all of a sudden the, the wind changed and all of a sudden the air feel a little different, you know rains are coming. All I can tell you, you look around outside, you know something's about to happen. He's a coming. No man knows the day or the hour, but I'm telling you, friend, it's getting closer and closer. And lo, the fact he's coming, we must first of all be revived. We need to take serious this meeting coming up. We must be revived. We must do business with the Lord. And then we must reach everyone we can. There are people not ready to meet the Lord. And that ought to burden our hearts to make us put aside things that we have made time for to make certain we make time. To let sinners know Jesus is coming. Share the gospel with them. We can't take for granted that people all around us know the gospel. Most churches don't preach the gospel anymore. Most people have never heard a clear-cut presentation of the gospel. We've got to get the gospel to them. We've got to reach everyone we can. And then we need to be ready to go. I'm going to Grenada, Lord willing, come Monday. I have not packed one thing. I am not ready to go. But Lord willing, come Sunday, I'll be ready to go. 
The Lord's coming back. We better be packed and ready to go. Are you ready to go? See, the only thing you can take to heaven with you is somebody else. Are you ready to go? Have you, have you reached everybody you can? Have you let your family know? Have you let your friends know? Have you let your classmates know, your co-workers know, your neighbors know? We need to be ready to go. We need to take as many people as we can with us. There came a last night for Sodom. There's coming a last night for this old wicked world. Are you ready to meet the master? Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get us on. Child of God, it starts with us getting revived. How can we expect sinners to come to the Lord when we're not willing to come to the Lord? When was the last time you done business with God? I'm talking about doing business with God. Folks are coming. They're picking out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. Lord, we all know you're coming to take your church out of here. We just don't think it's going to be tonight. God, forgive us. We're not to take thought for tomorrow. But Lord, we're to certainly spend our day walking in the light as you're in the light and being all we can for you on this day. God, help us to be a witness. God, help us to be where we need to be with you. God, send revival. May we see many come to Christ in these days. And God, may we truly be ready when you come. I want to be one of them five wise virgins. virgins. I want to have my lamp filled with oil. God, help us tonight. God, help your people. God, we don't know anybody's heart, but in a crowd this size, there just may be somebody here that's not saved. I pray for them. I pray they'd come to trust in Christ before it's too, too late. Lord, help them to come tonight. We'll get somebody to take a Bible and show them how to be saved. They can be saved tonight. But God, I pray for your children. Lord, they'd set their affections on things above. And Lord, they'd truly live as unto Christ. Bless now this invitation. Speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.